Hello, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Delhi for more action from the Lawn Bowls. And this is, I'm delighted to say, the gold medal match in the women's triples. And what a match it promises to be, Australia against South Africa. It's just coming up to 4 o'clock local time. We've got another scorching day here in Delhi and some red-hot action too, I'm sure, to look forward to this afternoon. And, of course, the men's triples this evening. That's the scene with the main stadium that you'll obviously have seen from other events in the background. We're just in the lee of that stadium. And those are the conditions here today. You can see the flags flying a little more strongly than they have been. Temperature very warm. It's 33 degrees. It's really warm today. Humidity, thankfully, a lot lower. It started off quite cool, and the humidity has been very reasonable today, so it's been a much more comfortable day in that respect, but the sun is really fierce. There's no haze, no cloud, just burning down out of a clear sky, and it's hard work for these players and spectators. But overall, you can't complain because the setting is terrific. There we are, Australia-South Africa, the gold medal match coming up right now but in the women's triples, and then this evening still to come, Australia-South Africa again, this time, though, the gold medal match in the men's triples. So terrific action coming your way. That's the view looking back down the complex. This is the one we're featuring very much. Australia, we've seen quite a lot of them, not quite so much as South Africa in our TV coverage. That's just the way it goes as you work your way through the group matches, but uh, we've enjoyed it all the way. We're familiar with both sides, and they brought plenty of support with them, as you'd expect. And those people really are in for a hot afternoon. No wonder one or two of them are trying to get in, as you see there, under the shade, because this sun is really, really fierce. I think everyone enjoys a warm afternoon, but this is really, really hot. David Bobin here, welcoming you to our coverage from Delhi, and alongside me, David Corkill. And David, uh, we're looking forward to this because these are two really good triples outfits. Absolutely, and uh, not only that, but they've also had to fight their way through things. We're looking at Julie Keegan, the skip. On the left, Sharon Renshaw. And on the right, you'll find Claire Duke. South Africa. We'll see Sankey Steen. Well, that's Sanja, but she likes Sankey in the lead. That's what she likes to be called. Tracy Lee Botha is the second. 21-year-old young girl, there she is, played very steady stuff on the way through this. And the skip, Susanna Nell. Coming to the end now of the practice ends, just to see how things get on. Players all watching very carefully. Last-minute chat with coaches and managers and everybody else that wants to put forward an idea as to how they're going to do. These are interesting moments as we count down towards the start, David. I just wonder what you make of this match, and who would you say, if the bookies were here, what price would they make the favourite? Would they be odds on, or is it going to be very close? I have a feeling that it's going to be very, very close. I really do. It's, it's hard to tell. You know, both these teams, they came out of separate sections. Of course, there were playoffs and things, so it's quite possible you might come against another team. But it's going to be hard to call. It really is. South Africa ended up second overall in their section. Australia ended up second overall in their section. So, the horn has been sounded and we're off now. We don't have any limit on time regarding this. We expected the last summer round about the 2.45 to three hours. Both teams have changed in terms of the way they're playing. The seconds are coming up to the head. It was a favourite of uh, the Australians to do that, but the South Africans are also doing it. And that's an indication of how serious this is. First jack of the gold medal playoff has just gone in the ditch from the South African, Sankey Steen. She was looking for a full-length jack, and it went in with a little bit of pace on it, so a little nervy one, David. There's going to be nerves out there. Of course there are, and from the playing point of view, how will they cope with these conditions? Of course, both uh, triples used to the heat, but this really is intense heat and intense sun, and it's going to be unrelenting. It will be. 
And of course, during this match, there will be the transition from daylight to evening. So, Jack has been recast by Sharon Renshaw and it goes back to Sankey Steen to play the first ball. Be interesting to see who settles down into this final the quickest. Doesn't matter how experienced you are, these are always nervous moments at the start of the gold medal match. So much at stake. People tend not to remember the runners up. But they do certainly remember the winners. And who will that be today? That's what they've all come here for at this Commonwealth Games. Gold is the target. And that's very much achievable for one of these two triples units this afternoon. And of course tonight in the men's event to follow under the lights at night on another balmy, scorching, sweltering evening in Delhi. We've seen, I think I was making the point, we've seen quite a lot of this Australian unit. They've done pretty well, haven't they, David? We've, we've seen good moments, tough moments, but they've overcome them all and they've played pretty well. Yes, I, I think the one thing that I've noticed with uh, the Australian team is that no one player has really been absolutely outstanding in the matches we have covered, but no one player's had a, a poor game either. And, and that's really what this is about. This is about keeping the unit together and working for each other. Charmin Shaw and Claire Duke on the left, a young girl, 27 years of age, being skipped by Julie Keegan, now 46. You know, so there's, there's a degree of youth in both teams, but there's also a lot of experience around, and, and I think that's a very good mix. It really is a yeah. good mix to have that. I agree, absolutely. This is going to be such a good match. Claire Duke's been pretty impressive uh, for most of this week. Very steady, very consistent. Really enjoyed her play with these two rather more experienced girls either side of her in this women's triple. But she's been good. Nothing too close at the moment. That's going to take a while before it settles. It's all a bit loose at the moment, and understandably, mm. the nerves are getting to people a little bit. That will settle down very quickly, although they don't have a lot of time with nine end sets. Two nine end sets with a three end tie break, if required. That can stretch through, of course, to four or five ends. Just trying to drop inside the ball. This is building up now. Oh, it's just dropped off it, but if it goes back, it's another shot. I love these individual clashes you get in these triples units. I mean, she's obviously up against Julie Keegan. And Julie, very experienced, but such a good player. And we've seen her produce the goods just when Australia's needed it most. A few occasions we've seen her in trouble. She's been asked to do something fairly difficult, and she seems mainly to have the ability to do that. So let's see how quickly she's settling down to conditions here this afternoon. Oh, 
Well, the little facial reaction tells you she didn't like it much. Yes, for Julie, his experience is no doubt about that, but not at the very highest level. And that's where the problem may be for some. And so she always has that little that little twitch there. <laughs> Get the Tongue in cheek. Back. Yeah. Close again. Good effort from Julie. Yep, got a little clap for that. I'll be interested to see just the situation. I think it's going to be three shots, though. Good pace, just didn't get back into the head again. Three it is. So South Africa off to a flyer. There's it. Australia three, South Africa nil. Shot. Has played very steady balls all the way through. Oh, that's good stuff from both players. That's good stuff from two leads that need to be in the top of their game. Good ball. That is a good ball on a front toucher. Not much reaction from her team, but I tell you what, I'd be delighted with that. That ball gets punched onto the jack. That's the back one. That will be the saviour. Triples, of course, played with two balls each, instead of the normal three. And it makes for a much, much quicker game. It's a beautiful afternoon here, just coming up to 10 past four local time in Delhi. Wherever you're watching around the world. I hope you're enjoying our coverage of what promises to be a great event. Incidentally, uh, I'm told that, well, it's the 10th of the 10th of 10 today, so there's a nice stat for you. While you're looking at your diary, 10, 10, 10. It only happens very seldom. Oh, yes, well, there's one or two more interesting stats will be arriving, no doubt. Oh, there's a couple of beauties we're going to produce later. Once we find a pen with enough ink to take <laughs> note of them. Just got my pen back from our runner. Oh, close. Well, there we go. 
won't be too happy with that, actually, because it's taken the close second shot away. Opportunity now for Claire Duke to add to this. Oh, she's done well there. Yep. Door was opened whenever that second shot was pushed out of the way, and that's really a different situation now. So often she's been able to produce that sort of shot throughout this tournament. She's been very steady in the middle, there's no doubt about that. Just going through. Well, the back position's building up now. Julie had another. Looking close, if he gets a solid. Well, I think that might just be enough. If not, at least he's pushed the second ball back in line with the jack. No catch there now. That's the idea. Claire, put your foot down because you want to show her where she needs to be. This looks very narrow to me. Don't think it's going to hold that sort of line. Disappointment. <laughs> Close here, big thick edge. Just checking it's in. Well done. Definitely going to get their three back by the looks of it. Three it is. It is. Triples swapping triples. <laughs> it's only taken me 25 days to get our 25 games to get that in. There's confirmation of the three for Australia. Three, three after two ends. And nine ends, of course, in this first set. Another set to follow and possibly a tiebreaker. But we'll think about that later. There's a long way to go. Once again, in previous matches that we've watched, all three players have been very steady. It's going to get noisy up here because uh, there's a lot of people about. We have our uh, media colleagues from Indian Radio and Indian TV, I see. And we've also got a number of press as well. That's the usual situation on gold medals matches.
loose end for Sharon Minshaw. That's unusual. She's normally very, mm. very steady. There she is, just having a quiet word with the coach. Thing is, in some of the group matches, you'd probably get away with that, but you suspect at this level in the final, you could well be punished. Certainly by opposition as good as South Africa. Well, this is all getting a, a bit dangerous now for the Aussies. Both these teams, their third match. And it's pretty tough going. All very loose, and that's also a sign of danger as well because there's nothing to hit into, too many gaps to run through. Well, Claire making sure she's arriving with this, but unless she gets a big heavy... Oh, she did. She got a, a thick edge, which brought her in a bit. May have taken one off, possibly two. Has indeed taken two shots out. Fortunate result. This is all a bit scrappy, a bit disappointing, this one. Yes, I like to study the body language and just how people are, and there's communication there between the skip, I noticed, and South African coach at the side. I noticed that the coaches from both teams are in extreme opposite sides of the rink. Whoa, what is doing there? And in some ways, I'm a little bit surprised, that sort of communication, because when you're playing, you should be really, absolutely, totally focused on what you're doing. This was a great opportunity to drop another one in. You know, there shouldn't have been any discussion. And the coach, to be honest, I think, distracted her a little bit by clapping on the way down. You know, yeah. So I think, well, don't do that. Just let them concentrate on the job in hand. You're seeing a lot of things at these games that don't get your thumbs up. Well, they don't because, you know, they've spent a long, long time preparing for these games. You don't want to fall at the last hurdle. Julie's trying to drop around this ball, anchors out to make it stop, though, and it's running through. You know, this is a great chance to add another. There should have been at least four or five shots here for South Africa because the Aussies have gone walkabout. Well, this is better. This could be very good. This is better. It needs to drop inside just in front. Oh. That's the idea. And that's where the last one should have been. Good ball. Well, well done. Australia are, as you say, not at the races in this one. But that shot to me, David, is the first ball was a lack of concentration because it was too far away. Yeah. really was. You know, you can miss it by, by a ball, maybe, but not as much as that. And now we're in a situation, as we see this ball coming in, Little touch on it, makes the three, tightens it all down. The skip is over with the coach again. Why?
But anyway, here we go. Moving on swiftly, or not so swiftly as the case may be, as the Aussies decide what to do. It's, it's a, a bit slow at the moment, well, isn't it? Come it's on. going to be this way. Yeah. It, it is. No, this is conference time. This is the final, and I understand that. It's difficult. It's not easy. Gold medals at stake. Absolutely. She needs an edge. I can understand the way she played it. She wanted to give the ball a chance, which is understandable. But it looks yet another triple. Wait for confirmation from the marker. Anja Kamari Rana. Good news for South Africa again. And Australia punished for a sloppy end. Well, that's exactly what it was, a sloppy end. And it all started really from the lead. Oh, she needed an edge. She knew that. The girls both knew that. Little edge would have taken one out. She would have come onto the shot ball. So after three of the nine ends, it's South Africa who lead Australia 6-3. Some decent scoring early on, but Australia not really settled down yet. Yes, I'm not sure if it's decent scoring or scary scoring, <laughs> to be honest, because the first few ends are normally very tight as the players find their way. Three threes is always a little bit frightening. Having said that, there's always matches that happens in and uh, World Outdoor Championship. I played against David Bryant and we exchanged four threes in the first four ends well, in singles. And we looked at each other, it was six all, and we looked at each other and thought, what on earth is going on here? <laughs> it was too strange, it really was. And would you believe and you probably haven't seen one here, the great man played a wrong bias. Good Lord. But he didn't have the decency to do it during the match. He did it in the trial ends. <laughs> great game, 21-20 in the end. Sadly, I was on the wrong side of the result, but uh, no shame when it comes to David Bryant. Close with this, close with this. Well, at the moment, she's definitely winning the battle of the leads. Lovely, easy action of Sharon Renshaw. Needs to hold up a little bit. It's gonna dive under. Mm. As I say, these matches are a bit of a sprint. You don't have an awful lot of time to gather yourself if you don't get going the first two or three ends. That's a lovely view there of other matches going on, even during a gold medal match. Lee. Well, hmm. Come on,
Just a matter of getting back with this. The weight's much better. Well Need to hurry, though. Oh, that's good. That's very good. It's a beauty just in front. Oh, very close. A little smile, but it's a bad result. They're putting on, I think, the Australians a bit of a brave front here because they I think are. they're worried that things are going wrong mm -hmm. and they're not really in control. No, they're not in control, they're not consistent, but they're not that far behind either. But there's a little bit, it's just not, things just haven't sorted themselves out yet. Good mix there of different players in different countries, some Aussies, and there's a couple of South Africans, of course, and they're always going to get that in the mix. Once again, Julie Keegan facing a not very enviable, enviable situation. On, Needs to hurry with this to get into the area. Got one. Yep, taking that away. Now that opens the door for an opportunity. And that's good because that means every ball is a value here. She's pushing one ball out with the first ball take the one through the gap, that leaves the two back balls in play. On the blue one, well that's handy as well. Stops the trail, this would be a standard draw. She was after the ball, she wasn't far away from it, to be truthful. So not really that lucky, in fact, a little bit possibly unlucky, but uh, there we go. Magic Kamari Rana, our favourite marker. She's been on. So the score now 6-4 after four of the nine ends in this first set to South Africa. Australian. Australian's happy to take a single with that. Well, look at that with Julie Keegan. Was uh, in trouble there, but she played two very good balls. Six four after three, or after four, they'll need to settle themselves a little bit. The Australians they're playing a little bit of catch up here. That's better. That's better. Steady up.
Mm, just dropped it a little bit. Have to do it with two, not just one. And this is where the game starts to slow down a bit as the lead comes down to the skip and the second player goes doing the mat to play and the Australian second stays up in a head like this. I don't really understand that because almost no matter what she does, you know, it's going to be quite straightforward to see it. Dropping in Jack High or just beyond Jack High. Nothing that couldn't be seen from the other end. So off we go. This has got a bit of work to do to get back from here. That's out very wide. Nope, there it goes. Whoa, that was quick. What on earth? What she doing with that sort of pace? Wow. Yeah, well, Claire's this... not really in this match so far. We haven't seen that same consistency that we've seen throughout the tournament. By her own standards, this is not a vintage performance. Well, oh, yeah. Just when she needed it most, she's struggling to find a normal game, let alone her A game. Mm, that's too far as well. Still a bit, a bit loose on both sides. She needs to do something now. Well, I think, Dave, it's one of those things that whenever you get a player who's struggling a little bit like this, they just need a couple of good balls, one really big ball in particular, and suddenly it's like a switch. Close with this, just a little bit heavy. You know, mm. really heavy with the first one. You know, Most two. unlike her. She normally uh, learns so much from the first one. Yeah, you know, they should be adapting. This is a gold medal game. This is the, the final, and uh, she will be disappointed. I think the South Africans sense that Australia are worried and they're just playing well enough to give them cause for future concern. Gently, gently. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's just a little bit of pace and really not what she wanted because you know, she'll be dragging the back, or the jack back towards the blue ball. Julie Keegan. She's. Uh, Got them out of trouble the last few ends. Looking on a narrow line to hold up to try and get the ball out clean. She's close. Just inside. Yes, just inside. Looked like it from the mat. We are positioned directly behind the rink, of course, so we've got a perfect view. After the ball, closer to the jack. Oh, well, that's got a good result out of it. Jack points forward, and there happened to be an early ball there from Sharon Minshaw that was short, and she's used that. Believe me, that was not intentional. <laughs> that just happens. There you go. There's the blue ball. That was Sharon Minshaw's early delivery. 
all the way up the green. Still, take them all while you can. Good strike, bang on target. So after an early flurry of threes on the score sheet, it's settling down a little bit now. Much tighter. 6-5 South Africa lead after five of the nine ends. signs and signs and signs of the Leeds position. It's a battle at the moment, it's being won by South Africa, and that's where it all starts, right at the beginning. Gently, 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 girl. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it is loose, I have to say, at this level. to help let's put it that way it's a little bit of a blocker but in terms of the shots hmm. the ball but the extra weight's going to hold it off mm. trouble here is that the Aussies can't afford to, to play to it with too much weight be aware of that they need balls in the head before you start attacking that's the difficulty It's all to do with pace with this one. She's better, better on the running this time. Much better. Oh, she got the jack, but got caught on the ball. I still think it's one to South Africa. Hmm. 
Just not quite firing on all cylinders, are they, the Australian girls? No, and they're creating their own problems as well, David, because they're not getting sufficient balls in the head. You know, if you're putting three and four balls in the head, by the time your uh, second's playing the last ball, your skip's playing the first, when you hit the jack or start playing into things, chances are it's going to go to your ball. Yep. At the moment, almost everything is touched. It's going to a South African ball. No, careful, careful. That's OK. I make sure of it, but the back position's the Aussies. Hard to tell, but I think there's only the one. There you go. The back position's the two blue. The red ball with the red stickers is one for South Africa. No, you're OK. You're OK, son. You're fine. So how does the skip deal with the pressure? Answers about to appear. Hmm. Just fell off the side. Got the wrong contact. Yep. It's a double dunter there, as we call it. Trying to get onto the red ball, hitting two balls to dunk through it. Um, yes, that's confirmation that it's only one to South Africa at the moment. But a little touch in the jack will make three. That's what she'll be aiming for. Just draw to the, the idea here is just draw the shot, draw to the jack. If you get a little touch on it, it's a major bonus. But you must be there. You have to arrive at it. Oh, good old dear. Well, I think this is really now an opportunity for Julie. Her second shot is covered at the front of the head. We'll get a chance. There it is. Her second shot, which is the blue ball, which is about uh, on your screen, a metre in front of the jack. There's a blue one in front of that, which is covering it. There's, that's a better picture. And then that can be hit onto it. There's a jack to go through. The two back balls are the blue balls. So anything with pace here can take out the ball clean or take the jack or get the front plant. So about three different options on the backhand. She's in the area, but will it get back? Oh, there it is. It's kicking out again. It's so characteristic of these artificial greens. One to South Africa. So Australia still not happy. Haven't settled down to their normal rhythm. They haven't been allowed to. One or two loose ends and one or two loose shots. And that's the result after six of the nine ends of the first set. It's South Africa in command by 7-5, but not really that much in control. Only two points. There's not much in it with two ends to go. up from her teammates uh, Sharon Renshaw the lead for Australia in this women's triples final here in Delhi on a, another hot hot afternoon quarter to five local time things not quite going Australia's way as you can see in the seventh end seven five to South Africa mm, well. and again Sharon Renshaw not quite there no, she's not. She's having a very inconsistent game by her standards and by anybody else's standards at this level. 
If I was Sharon, I would move on to the other side of the rink. She's tried to play the backhand so often, occasionally successful, but just not enough. In fact, if I was her skip, I'd be, I'd be moving her just for a change. That's all. Just, as I would say, if I was playing waste one, try one on the other side and see how it goes. She's been so consistent throughout this tournament, Sharon Renshaw. Well, the whole Australian triples have. Yes, they have, to be true. Um, they're all looking slightly below their normal best. Oh, it's a clap coming now. She's made the correction this time. There it goes. That's pretty good. Yep, that's good. Much well done. Better. Much yes, better. It is, but that's where the first one should be, David. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I would have risked the other side. Yes, and then time. you build from that. Exactly. The next time going this direction, will she remember that? As far as South Africa are concerned, they just want to keep on going as they are at the moment. They're doing enough to upset the, the rhythm of the Australians and the way they're playing each each end and it's it's enough at the moment well hmm, it's not bad but in roundabouts. Tracy not exactly ecstatic about it. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> you know, it was the first ball. She doesn't jump. actually reveal much with her facial expressions, whatever's mm. happening, does she? Tracy Liberta. Claire Duke needs to get back to her previous brilliance and consistency. And she hasn't yet done this afternoon. Come on, Claire. Come on, it's a bit more like it. At the moment, that's what's happening with Australia, where they're trying to. Uh, build on things as best they can, but the foundation isn't really there. This time, there's a bit more of a foundation on it now. Because they've got two balls in the head for a change. And the jack, oh, well, the jack's gone. But again, this is what I was saying, David. When you put balls in the head and you touch the jack, the chances are it's going to come to you. That's what happened. They had two balls in the head. South Africa touched the jack, and it goes back to an Australian ball. It's all about numbers at the end of the day. Asking a lot of this one. Asking even more if you don't push it. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear, no, that's left it open. The Australians just watching their body language, you know, which is always really 100% positive. Everything's right and the smiles and Supportive the high Supportive of each other. You know. It's 100% right at the start. Sometimes you just have to let it build a little bit. You know, it, you almost feel like they, they can't get more up for something during a match because they're already there at the first yes. end. Yes, I know just what you mean. There's only one place to go. And you can detect a change in the mood already. Pensive looks on the faces. They've got a real struggle here. Close with this. Needs a jack. Oh, got the gap. Oh. Cruel. Absolutely cruel. Thought she had half jack. She was going for a bowler jack and so close. Oh, no. Australia. I think if I was Julie Keegan, I would play not at a similar shot to this, you know. Be interesting to see what she does, but I'd be very keen to try and push into this head, try and take the ball out if she can. The second shot or the jack into the ditch herself, because it's very hard to draw to it. Come on, Joe. That's the idea. Be positive. Take the jack yourself. There it is, and that's the way to do it. Be positive to it. Take the shot away from the opposition. 
Now, it's still only one shot, David, but look how safe it is. Take the jack with you. Well, that's the tactics of the game when you're playing like this. That's why I was saying play the opposition shot. Take the risk of, of your own ball leaving the head, but with good weight, you get the jack or you get the ball. That was good. It's exactly where it's meant to be. A bit of life into this game yet. Close with this. Just not going to get back in time. That was a good effort. <laughs> this is good stuff now. Yeah. Suddenly livened up. It's about playing the right shots at the right time. Don't mind if players don't execute the shot, but as long as they pick the right one. That was a good effort. That was a way to play it. Give it a decent shot. Now, what Julie's looking at here is, how can I get this ball away? I'll tell you how to get it away. Don't. Just play the same ball as you played, hit your own, it'll go in the ditch, the jack will go in the ditch, you'll stay and you'll get two shots. So it's the same ball as your last. You're not going to give the shot away. She's just a bit far away to tell her that, David. Oh, she but should I'm know. Sure, I'm sure that's what's in her mind. Um, she should know. There's no better position, David, than whenever you've got a front toucher to get another shot because no matter what you do, as long as there's nothing behind you, you're never going to lose the shot. Oh, she's pulled it. She's pulled it. Oh, she's into the debris. Near what she wanted. No. Well, she didn't play the same ball. She went looking for the red one. Oh, she's not happy with that. The red ball that, with the blue she? stickers, and she shouldn't have. She should have just. Oh no, no, no. Just play the same ball again. Oh well, not to worry. She played a great first ball, and that's very positive. So it's really starting to tighten up now. It's 7-6 the difference after seven of the nine ends. Two still to come. South Africa seven, Australia six. Feet away. Mm. Well, that's not bad couple of feet behind. I wonder where he's from. Thank you would have been a little closer. And Sharon. Gently, gently, still running through a bit. It's not bad and it's in a good place, but eventually after a while it tires you out because it means that the second is effectively coming down to play lead. It is a bit of a battle that leads play on their own. They support the second and the skip, of course, but it's a specialist position. That's the way it works. Brett Wilkie there on the right-hand side. Leading the Aussie triples. Tracy Lee just tapping her shoulder. Steady, steady, she's saying, steady, steady. Well, actually, that's not bad. 
because it stopped her own ball, which means she's lying two shots. Took a little bit of pace off it. Well, this is the run for home in the first set. And with the shadows starting to lengthen, I've noticed the floodlights are on. Well, some of them anyway. Those immediately over our ring. Those in the background will soon be on. Yes, Surprised they haven't been on already because they do tend to come on at <laughs> lunchtime normally. Well, that's what the overcast. Uh, so weather we've had, David, over the last while. We've had a beautiful day here today. Cloudless, no haze. Oh, good ball. That's in. That's in for number one. And that's a bit of a relief for Julie that's a Keegan. Bit more like it, isn't it, for Australia? She hasn't had the easiest of journeys in this first set, the Australian skip. If they could just nip a couple more balls in, it would really put the pressure on the South Africans. Just mm. short, but it's in a good place. Good again. That's good again. If it drops back, it hasn't, but it's still good. Ball. That's two good balls. Really good balls by Claire Chirk. That's what she needs to do as well, because you can lift the team from the middle. Just there's an opportunity to get your lead going, that's all. There you go, that's the first one going in. Yeah, so we smile there, that's good. And there's the second one going in. Didn't get another shot, but here it comes. We can bring you anything. Top team. This is a, another interesting end, coming to an exciting conclusion. Mm, this has got a bit of work to do. I can understand why she played it, because the two balls on the way in on the backhand are both South African. I thought she might have played it just a little bit more positive on a narrower line. And Julie Keegan getting right in there, looking from above the jack. And just seeing it all through in her mind as to where it needs to go. Now as she walks back, I guess, just planning how she's going to play this shot. Yes, well... She knows the scenario. She's seen it at close hand. I tell you what, this is a great chance. Well, at 7-6, oh. and we're nearly at the end of the eighth end, this is so close. This is an absolute beezer chance here to draw the jack for four. Well, if they do, the Australians could lead in this match for the first time. Oh, yeah, so she gets the jack with this. She's got a chance to turn it around the corner for five. She can get a nudge of it. Oh, oh. so close. Oh. Looked could, on target, didn't oh, it? They can win the set from this position. Well, she's still in with a shout. A Lovely pace for it. Beauty pace. This has to be narrower. It really has to be narrower because if she missed the head, she must try and get it. There's the blue ball coming in yet again. Just need a little nibble of it. That's all. This is not getting back. This ball is not getting back. Well, I tell you what, that's not a bad position to be in. That could have been a lot worse. Now, this is important. Come on. Another chance for Julie Keegan. Draw the shot. If you pick up the jack, it's a bonus because you'll make three. They're clapping her already. She's very close with this. Oh, it's diving under. It's gone under. Oh, no. That's a disaster for her. Well, unlucky. Well, disappointing. It's going to be one to red. South Africa get the one. That could have been so important because the one means that the score stands as 8-6 now. South Africa 
Maj can marry Brianna. I've just got that vital edge as we go into the last end of this first set. And there it is, confirmation, South Africa 8, Australia 6. Australia have not led at any stage in this match. And they're up against it now. Chance in the last end, just couldn't quite make it. Once again, Sharon, she's not having her best game in this final. And I would move her. I really would move her on the other side of the green, David, because sometimes when you're battling like this, you're fighting yourself and you're fighting the green. Just change it. It doesn't matter if there's a ball in the way. Just move her. It's a bit late now because there's two balls there now in the forehand, but Sharon has been better with the second delivery. There we go. The South African support. Better line with this one, much better line. This will come back if she's got good weight. It will come back, here it comes. There you go. Oh, it's fallen away from the jack as well. a good line this, this hand's not too vicious as long as your weight's good you've always got a chance to rest on or pick it up there you go just like that good ball little battle of the 20 year old girls well 21 and 27 it's uh, the two young girls in the middle of the rink or the triple a little mini battle of their own Calling it, calling it, got it, absolutely solid. Great ball, Claire, well done. Solid weight on the ball, out she goes, and push, that's it. Makes the double. And now Tracy has to try and follow. She's down on a similar line. Is the pace the same? It looks a little bit heavier. Oh, that's a good ball, though. That's a good second. Two good balls. Oh, she's in again. Two great balls. Julie's pleased, and so she should be. Thank you very much. Well done, second. Ball on the ball, and it stays up. The high fives are back, David. Well, it's suddenly looking a lot better. Jack, yes, she's got it. Oh, and there's a back ball there, but 
Is it enough? That's a girl. Go on, go down there and have a look. Look at this. Ball, Jack, and she tapped the other one. <laughs> Good reaction from the South Africans. Well, the first set is so critical, it really is. This is very important. We're so close to the end of this first set, and 8 6 the margin. South Africa with a lead, and Australia needs something special here. If anyone can do it for them, it's this girl, Julie Keegan. Ah, she's been pretty solid, I have to say. And pretty solid. Good looking line. She's in the area with this. Well, She's really in the area. Edge it, edge it. Oh no. Oh, she hit the red ball in and the blue ball dropped away. Oh, that hurt. Oh. That'll hurt the Aussies. There we go. Just got the edge. She's getting up to have a look. That took all the power out of it. That was the problem. That little edge first took the power out of the ball. Nice, Suzanne. What can you do? On the forehand, try and add another. Put the pressure on. Also, we land two. Be a good ball even to go through with this one. And the girls are waving it through. They want it through that. Oh, no, don't stop there. Well, that's wide enough not to cause any real problems. Yeah, they wanted her deeper than that. They wanted a ball right around the back. Yep. That's what Tracy was trying to say. Pull, pull, pull. Well, these are vital moments for Australia. No wonder they're discussing this so intently. Team decision, lots of advice, but ultimately it's down to the skip, Julie Keegan. Now, destiny of this first set, and possibly the gold medal, lies in what she's about to produce. Australia have never led in this first set. It's currently 8-6, and we're right at the business end of this final end. Yeah. Same ball as the last one. In the air. Ooh, she's wider this time. Pushed it out high. Needs a lot of help to get back from there. Oh, not even an edge. It looked wide out of the hand. We're right behind, mm. so we could tell. Now, if it's two shots, that's going to make it really tough in this first set. But it's only the one. It's one. Now, see what can happen to the Australians at the start of this second set. They've been usually off to a decent start in every match with Sharon Renshaw's terrific performance as lead. Hasn't produced that form today, and that's one of the reasons why the Australians have lost that opening set. But she needs to find the magic Ooh, soon, that. and that's better. <laughs> there you go. There you go. She's done it now. What a time to that's do it. That's what she hardly ever did, if at all, in that opening set first ball that she's had as a toucher and that's why the little smile is there she hasn't managed to do that the whole match no she's mm. done it all week that's the first time we've seen it today just when they really need it in this women's final yeah. 
Now, what you need to do here is be not only very careful, but it's a front toucher, but you want to be deep and through it. Oh, and you don't want to be narrow either. Mm, it's pulling out on the pace. Now, just gentle, gentle. That's it. Now hurry. Now hurry to get past. That's the perfect ball. That is the perfect end of a lead when you need three shots. Absolutely spot on. The expression gives nothing away, but she must be sighing a little sigh of relief and thinking, thank goodness I'm back. I found my rhythm, I got my length and line, and that's what I was doing all week. I need to carry on doing that now. Terrific stuff. This is very difficult. The massive cheer is just going up beside us. Other matches going on, of course. Mm, that ball just on the high side. Well, you know, it's it's a difficult one because South Africa realise they need a close ball. They don't need to go chasing this. There are three shots in, in, in uh, a nice position. Now, let's see if Australia can continue this mini revival. Careful, careful. Well, this will be a help. There you go. Good second. In Australia lost a three in the first end. When you're looking for two or three shots in the first end to build on to it, that's what you have your lead and your second doing. You get your lead in close. You get your second to add to it. Players failed on this occasion, mm -hmm. but the position's still pretty good. They're looking out of this, you should be looking for three shots, really, the way that head sits. Yep, got away narrow. One of those things, Claire, don't worry about it, move on. Mm, it's a beezer, that one. Front toucher, it's only going one place, and that is back. Australia have the back ball, but they're still looking to score two or three shots out of this end. It'll be my target anyway, try and get a three. Wet sitting. Close, very close. There's the spring of the jack, and is she going to fall back? Oh. If that falls back, it's the shot. It's almost unheard of to be able to get an outside edge like that, push it through and fall back on a heavy green. On a fast green, I can understand it, but not so much on a heavy green. So close. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. Oh. Good ball. Really good ball. That's keeping pressure on. That's what she needs to do. Lovely. Right on it. 
Gets the body language going, gets everything going. Now, what's this shot going to be? Well, she needs to arrive at it. They have to be a little bit careful, but she's got the position. If she hits it solid, she's got the position off the left of the head. That's where the red balls are. If she can get into it with pace, with pace, with pace, ball out. Oh, that's a great ball too. Oh. Suddenly, we've moved up a few gears in this match. Perfect take out. Little bit unlucky not to get a slight movement on the jack. But it's keeping the Australians under pressure. Now the Aussies are still in with a shot here. There's still a chance of getting two or three shots out of this end. She didn't push it at a time mm. to move the jack. What a chance to pull the jack back for three. Oh. Just the one then for Australia. <coughs> at least they've got a lead in this set. Off and running. Couldn't get the three. It looked good for a while, but uh, better than losing a count. cheers going on at the side of course that's simply because there's other matches going on at the moment <coughs> it's a carnival of bowls at Commonwealth Games it's on every single day That's a lovely little badge on the left. That's the badge of the saint. There you go. If you remember that television program many years ago, the original saint, David Roger Moore. What well, Roger Moore driving an old Volvo sports car? A Volvo P1800. That's the one. I remember it well. Da, 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 exactly. Da. Great music. Great the series. Hockey stick side on it, where the way the bodywork was designed. <laughs> Lovely action, beautiful action of Sharon Renshaw, and a lovely result for her. She's come into the game a bit more. There you go, that's it there. Isn't that wonderful? Good effort, just dropped a little bit short. 
You may also hear uh, the tannoy system that's going on. It's not actually the Bowles tannoy system, it's coming from other areas. And uh, of course, we're right beside the main stadium and the weightlifting is also close by. So there's a lot going on around this area. on the short side. Wasn't the easiest route to get in either. It's a very difficult angle to come in on the backhand. The forehand's a bit more obvious, but there's a South African bowl on the forehand. And that's what she's aiming for. Tracy just wants to touch her own bowl or drop inside. Oh, just on the wrong side of it. The right idea, very much the right idea. Well, that's a South African ball pushed in. It was always going to be difficult. As we hit the early evening, the light is starting to go down. Spotlights are well and truly on now. It's all on the contact. Here we go. Is she going to get it absolutely plumb? There you go, right in the middle. One to red. Yep, there's the signal. Well played. Well done, Suze. Well, it's all happening around us now. Indian radio have kicked in, David. And They're getting quite excited. They are. Indian television are going at the other side of us as well. Yeah, it's a very busy scene here in the main stand. Lots of action going on, and we've got a terrific match too. No, Julie. Come on, Julie, will it get back? Will it get back? Will it get back? Here it comes. Now it's starting to make a move. Now it's making a move. Oh, so close. <laughs> really good ball. That closes the head down. Nice, Suze. This is really good stuff, you know. It's, Suzanne Nell played a brilliant ball. Julie's just played a really good ball. Nice, no, Suze, what are you doing? This is difficult for you because the ball's in the way. You have to clear it. No value in going into that head. Can't blame her being stay staying away from it. Julie, just trying to promote her own ball. Like, ball on the ball is the perfect result, but she, well, she's under, but will she get a little bit of help off this front ball? Off it. Oh, so close. Oh. Good stuff. So there we go. It's one all now in the uh, second set after two of the nine ends, so still nothing in it.
not bad. It's uh, probably three feet in front. And Sharon Renshaw is very, very careful about the way she steps on the mat to get the angle right. And she's on the inside of the mat on this hand. You approve of that, though? You like the correct use of the mat? Well, I do, but the only thing is that she's trying to get a tight line by being on the inside, and that inevitably draws you tight. By going on the middle or the outside, you're coming in from the outside in. The inside out on an artificial, artificial surface is always maybe a little bit difficult. It's not that swingy. Front one behind, and it's uh, Sharon Renshaw. So just push, just places her foot so tentatively. It's like she's just stepping onto eggshells. <laughs> Needs to come back. Pretty turn quick with this one. It's not going to make it. Jack High. No, she didn't like it. Straight away, knew it wasn't right. See coming down on the backhand. Gently, gently, she might pick up this jack. Oh, it's a long way. Just come on the inside. didn't push through it. Well, this is a bit of a loose end. Fortunately, for both teams, the scores are level. Well, this is sweeping away again, and Mr. Line, which is a pity because the weight was so good. Claire Duke, wasting no time whatsoever. Try and make a correction on the last one. Out on the wide line, let it draw back. I think this is the way to play this hand. On the wide side, let it draw back with the pace. Give it an extra shove, and you get there. There you go. That's why I don't like the inside of the mat there, David. I prefer the outside of the yeah. mat coming yeah. in this direction in that particular hand. That's swept back right into center rink. Team say thank you very much, Claire. Much appreciated. <laughs> Just a little bit through. Not much. It dropped back, so they're looking at it. And Suze has played well in this match. Is uh, Played some good stuff, good steady stuff as well, being prepared to attack. That's decent. Just dropping back, we can't really tell from the angle we're at.
Julie trying to get onto the ball. Ooh, just past it. She lifts that ball up once, she'll make three out of it. Another ball to come. Yeah, it was a decent effort, that one. Oh, that's a good ball. That's a definite, that's a definite shot. It's really good when you play one ball and you can just drop a few inches off the next one on the line. That is a beauty. Still early days, of course. Well played, really good ball. Disappointing. It is. Very disappointing. Claire's looking for a measure. Well, I think if I was them, I'd bring in the umpire because uh, you don't want any mistakes at this level. <laughs> this should be the shot. That's one. Be just the one, just the one. Oh, that's a really good ball. That's <laughs> Julie Keegan carries her chalk at the back of her hat. There it is. That's a little spray chalk. I suppose it's as good a place as any. But that one is enough to give South Africa the lead. Two-one now. They lead in this second set. Lindsay Armitage uh, lead in the Aussie. Doubles. And that's the double, or the two players are the triples as well. Ryan Turley and Brett Wilkie. Lights are now fully on as the sun starts to disappear. It's late afternoon here in Delhi, just after 5.30 local time. And uh, soon it will be dusk. And then we have the excitement of action under lights. Yes, you can always tell, can't you, David, that suddenly the black kites have disappeared. They come back a little now and again, but the crickets start up. Very warm, very balmy. It is. You're the nature expert. <laughs> Bearing in mind some of the things that have been the crawling. wildlife fan. <laughs> exactly, they've been crawling around the place. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful, it really is. You're almost frightened to put your legs out underneath the commentary table. <laughs> I've just double checked, and it's clear at the moment. It won't be for this evening's game. However, back to the action. Thank you, Steen. In again. It's a lovely action. So easy, so smooth as she watches that going through. But it's kicking out. Yeah. 
Yes, that's uh, John McArdle, who is the president of World Bowls Limited, who are the link governing body for this event in the Commonwealth Games. Known John for many, many years. He just came on to the uh, World Bowls directorship as I was leaving it. And uh, solid bloke, originally from Scotland. Stunning, absolutely stunning. That's what we like to see. The late afternoon here in Delhi, the sun almost gone, as you can see, just in the haze in the distance, but it has been a wonderful day. Really, really sunny and very hot. All the humidity seems to have gone, and the wind has dropped too now. So the conditions for play are better, if not perfect. But having talked about better, that's not better from Claire. Disappointing. She has been inconsistent in this match, no doubt about it. She's been so much better in the build-up in the group games. She was good and obviously in the semi-final too, but here in the final failed to reproduce that consistency that she is so good at. Mm. Well, this is just building up again. Australia need Claire to reproduce her form from earlier in the week. Yes, yeah, she's played some decent ends. It's um, been a little bit of a stuttering performance, actually, from Sharon and Claire. You feel that if they can get going, and this is a very good ball. That's better. And should get the roll well in. Well done. Excellent delivery. You just feel if they can get going to put a bit of pressure on the South Africans, it'll tighten up even more. As it is, the South Africans are playing really well. You know, they're not putting balls on top of the jack, but they're getting them in the area. There's the ball coming in. Look at Julie Keegan just wanting that ball in. I'm not surprised. If I was skipping, I would be too. Yeah. It's a big relief, I can tell you, when you see that happening. Yeah, celebration, but relief as well in that yeah. uh, high five. A wee bit subdued, I have to say, because uh, Sharon's still struggling with her own game and battling with herself. And, of course, trading in this set too, Australia, so not too much to be happy about, but they are starting to just occasionally show what they can do. But in the area here, really in the area here. Oh, what happened? Just pushed the ball right through. That dipped at the last moment. We thought it was going to come through. just didn't get past half ball we do apologize if you're here in the PA system continually going on but uh, I've been informed that there's some sort of uh, traffic control going on and I quote what was said a moment ago please no over overtaking if you do it will be a mess so traffic in Delhi must be getting busy outside the stadium I'm just thinking it must be getting dark because Julie's taken the shades off. Yes. Yeah, so shades have been on all week. I hardly recognise her without them. Again, a bit of interference there from uh, the coaching side of the South African team. And there's the end result. <laughs> 
Yes, there's Sins Fraser. He's the coach of the South Africans and a uh, very experienced player himself. I've known him for some time and really, you know, there's a time to do it, but you have to do it whenever. That's the time to do it now when the end's over, not when the two balls are there. Show the support. That's what he's doing. That's what he's there to do. But I don't think it's wise disturbing players when they're in the middle of an end. Here we go. Now, will this ball make a bit of an effort just to drop in for the third? Catches the ball at will, catches it solid. That's there, it should be. Yep, there's the clap. The Aussie girl's just waiting to find out. Two out and a measure. Hmm. Coach Bryce Stewart of Australia, again having a little... Uh, Word with Julie. Oh, it's well in. Well in. Three. Get the treble on the board, they're saying. Bit early yet to make the run for home. So Australia in the lead now after that three in that uh, fourth end, and they lead it 4 2, having lost the first 9 6. So that's a bit better. They got some something to hold on to and maybe to build on from. Four sets gone. Five to go. Five ends rather in this second set and just signs that Australia are starting to recover some form. Good end indeed for Australia, but uh, South Africa in many ways are just have a little bit more of a grip on the game, I feel. And it's coming from there, it's coming from the lead. Sankey Steen has been playing some good stuff. Wilkie on the left, Wayne Turley on the right. Aussie men's triples just waiting to go into the final. They're in the final playoff for the gold. Close for this one. Very close, got it. Well done. Sean Renshaw made the correction after the first ball. Key moments in the middle of the second set. Australia in front, back in front, having taken the first end. And having taken the fourth as well, they're now back with that two-point cushion, but... Whether or not they can hold on is another matter. Sorry about the loudspeaker in the background, folks. That's the local police, as David explained, uh, governing the crowd and the traffic outside the stadium. And it's all part of life and colour here in Delhi. Good ball, excellent ball, right on it. Just played some good stuff, Stacey Butler. She's been fairly consistent, hasn't she, David? Without yes. being spectacular, she's just done a good job. She's doing the solid stuff well. That's what she's there to do. That's what her seconds position is. They take over if the lead doesn't get in to become a lead. And if the lead does get in, then they consolidate it by putting more balls in or cover the back. There's the main stadium, you can just see it. That's why there's so much going on with regards to crowd control and police control. 
As you say, David, it's all part of India. You know, I got a note through saying they're doing their best with it in terms of trying to get it switched. I said, oh, why? You know, it's not disturbing us too much, and uh, it's all good stuff. It's, it's all part of India. There's a lot of noise up here. I was just going to say there's a lot of noise up here when someone plays a good ball. Trying again. Oh, just under. Good effort, but she had lovely weight. She's a good wee player, this girl. Tracy both there's only 21. Oh, Claire Duke just trying to come inside but missing the line. It's okay there. Yeah, just got it absolutely solid, but unfortunately for South Africa. That was an Australian ball. Yes, indeed. Don't worry about it, girl. It's all right. Still looking to get into that little pocket. It's on the high side as well. Keegan on the wrong side of the front ball. That's narrow. It's going to sweep away. He gets a half hearted clap from the other two, but um, that's more in solidarity than praise. Oh, she wanted a thin edge. She got the ball too thick. I'm afraid just under on uh, both occasions. Julie Keegan didn't work for her that end. It's confirmed one to red. So another point for South Africa, and they narrow the gap now to 3 4. Just a point in it in this second set. Oh eight hundred ten thirty five thirty five is the number to call when you've got a crack in your windscreen because that's the number for Novus windscreen repairs. Show us your crack. Ah, oh, Novus. This is what I was saying about the opportunity to move Sharon Renshaw onto the forehand just to see what would happen. Now she's dropped short, but the line is good. She'll make correction with the next one. Yeah, you could see quite clearly it was better. The only reason she moved was she thought the backhand was blocked.
There you go, the correction on the forehand. Beauty. She's not sure about this because she looks narrow, that's why. And it is narrow. <laughs> no idea herself, she knew that was uh, not a difficult shot. Good line with this, it's all to do with pace, whether she'll drop in on the ball or the jack, got the ball, that's good, makes a double, and these heads can build up extremely quickly, there we go, nice solid contact. Certainly a much wider line with this one. If there's too much weight, it won't get back. It's trying its best now, though. Really trying hard now. Mm. Just a bow wide. That's why she wasn't too happy. Two short bowls. Two in the head for Australia. A lot of noise going on over in one of the other rinks. I'm just trying to check who it is. We think it may be uh, Scotland against Jersey in one of the playoff positions for the men's pairs. I'll with you in a moment as we see Susanna just trying to drop in on this ball if she can. Oh, just on the outside. Well, I don't know, that we touch might help. Yes, it's Scotland jersey by the looks of it, and Scotland took the first set, and Jersey are looking good for the second. In fact, they've just secured it, so that's what it is. Outside on the forehand, use the swing of the ball to drop in on it for another one. Should have been aiming actually. Oh, wait, Jensen Nigger, you were aiming for the red one to turn the jack or turn the red ball, but it was paced. Three short balls now from the Australians. They're playing with 50% in this end, but they're lying the other two. That's caught up in the short stuff. Oh dear, oh dear. Use the mat, girls, use the mat to come on the outside and swing it in. <laughs> Evening well and truly upon us now here in Delhi as we approach six o'clock <coughs> local time. Now this should be coming in from the outside in because on the outside on the forehand <coughs> You've got the red ball to your mat. She's on the outside of the mat, which is good. That's better. She's winning this. That's better. She is winning this one in. Oh, she didn't have the running. 
Well, I think it, well, I don't know, looked like it had drifted off, but uh, don't think it's quite made it, but it was a spare shot opportunity. <laughs> Just underneath, and they might put a measure on it. Waiting for confirmation now of just what happened. One to blue. So that point for Australia means it's now 5-3 they lead in this second set after six of the nine ends. And remember, a tiebreaker will be played should they finish at one set apiece. Well, now, this is starting to get interesting, David. Very yeah, interesting. Certainly is. 5-3. Australia definitely found some better form than they were showing in that first set. And South Africa, not quite uh, reproducing some of that form, but they're close to it. It's, this could be a very tense end to this set. You suspect there'll only be sort of one, maybe two points in it going into the last end. Happily, our friend on the PA system outside us stopped advising the traffic and the pedestrians I, I, he's gone home i was just wondering i knew something had changed <laughs> well it's very quiet now we haven't got that noise in the background much as i enjoyed the color and the life here in india i just got it's so, gone so i got so used to it well, i'm background. quite happy that it's gone it's very quiet it's peaceful i can concentrate on the match that's how it should be it's never easy it's, I tell you what, it's pretty hot here still, though, isn't it? it? Certainly the wind is. has died away totally, the flags are not moving, but it's very hot. Oh, look at that ball, it almost went backwards. There's a few funny runs developing, there's no doubt about that. Don't discuss that. Ball starting to track a little bit strangely. There we go. Ooh. Well, the thing is that this is a, a new surface. In fact, all greens are a new surface here, all four of them. But this is the most play that they've ever had. So they're untested. And what you'll find is in an untested green, even artificial, there'll be a few lines that will develop. That really shouldn't be there, but that's just all part of it. That's just the way it is. This is better again. This is better again. Yep, that's better. It's more like it. Sharon Renshaw, signs of her, certainly in the second uh -huh. set. She certainly played better in the second yes, set. Yes, she has, yeah. Which she did the first. Yes, by her own high standard, of course, still not quite there, but it's better than she was in that opening set. Got the Aussie green finger paint on the nails. There you go. Everything oh. matches. Yeah, a skip would take that any time and every time. There's the umpire, it's there. And with our little scoreboard marker as well. All these volunteers have come in from Delhi, a lot of them from the major universities, others as well, and there are literally thousands of them around the place. Well, the, the games wouldn't really happen without them. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Wide target. Even the outside blue ball would have been good. Oh dear. That was poor. Now, chance for Claire. Claire Duke, who's been very consistent. A shaky start, but has picked up. Playing quite well now. What can she do here? Taken time, but the Australians do seem to have found some sort of line and length and rhythm. They're more in this match now. They got the lead in the second set. Mm, well, not what they wanted. And Tracy Lee, a chance to make up for that first delivery, which was poor by her standards. More noise from the adjacent match, but um, 
I'm afraid that's part of life here because all the matches are close to each other. That was a better effort, much better effort from Stacey. Yeah, there's a lot of noise going on, Scotland against Jersey. There's a big, big support behind us, or behind in the main stadium, which is very adjacent to where we are, covering the television game. Just needs to hold up. It's not bad, it's in the area, I can tell you. Skip will be quite happy with that, it could be counting. Well, we're starting to get to the business end of this set, and it's interesting to see just how this is all going to pan out, because hard to call either way, just two points in it. After this, only two ends to go before we may reach the tiebreaker. Yes, it's a seventh end of a nine-end set. This is the time that the team in front really wants to score. They can make a run for home on this end. And this is for the gold medal, and there's not that many opportunities to play for a gold medal at Commonwealth Games. Oh, well, that's going to definitely be two shots now, if there was any question before. Reset again, just a little disturbance there. She looks up. Well, I'll tell you what, she has to have the power to get down to this. I don't think she's reaching though. The line wasn't too far away, but it was the pace. Disappointing. Well, it is because uh, this South African skip Sam Nell is a good player. She's proven so far in this match that she can play the shots as well as draw. Well, there we go again. There's the coach telling them what to do. Within the rules of the Commonwealth Games, of course, had, uh, had a little conversation with a couple of officials about this during the week and they were agreeing that uh, with me that really they're going to look at this again because you know this can be used as a, a spoiling tactic of course that's the trouble yes and if it's abused it will be um, it's uh, obviously it's been agreed somewhere I that don't it know can where happen. it just seems wrong doesn't it that so you can actually stop play and have a conversation like that which means that some people somewhere will always do that. Yes, they will. And, and of course, it's difficult in some respects for the coaches too, because when do they go in there? Do they wait to be invited by the player? Do they <laughs> force themselves upon the player? Yeah. You know, it's very difficult to know as well, but well, we'll every time that... she has this conversation, she seems to play a bad ball. Well, certainly last time. Oh, look at this. And look. this doesn't look any exception. Whoa. No, the shot was obvious. She was coming in on the blue ball, take it out, on the other one, take it out. She has a conversation, and I had worked it out in 10 seconds. I know. Well, the same thing, as you said, happened before. Long conversation, the end result, nothing. Mm. She's better than that, actually. I think she's a better player, really. She doesn't and need She that doesn't need it. Advice, she really she? doesn't, actually, David. She knows what to do. Yeah, she's a better player than, than that. I've watched her in a number of these ends and in previous matches. And she is a better player than to be told what to do. She knows what to do. So, an opening here for Julie Keegan. Chance for them to take a real grip on this oh, second set. It's struggling. It is, oh, dear me. She was concerned, a little bit concerned about moving things, but I think on the high side, giving it an outside chance would be worth it. As it is, going to be two shots to the Aussies.
As a responsible broadcaster, Sky supports the codes of broadcasting practice. This guide is available to all viewers and contains information on the codes and the formal complaints process. For a copy of the guide, write to the Broadcasting Standards Authority, PO Box 9213 Wellington, or phone them on 0800 366 996. You can also email the Broadcasting Standards Authority at this address or visit their website. Four points well, for this... Australia in this set, and it's achievable in over the two ends. Oh, very much so. Very Anything much so. could happen now, which would yeah. mean it will swing back in South Africa's favour, but we've got to see how they play. Yes, they don't have to win the set. That's a critical thing for South Africa. They just no. need to draw it. And um, there's probably 20 minutes or so to play the two ends with another 25 minutes for the tie break. So uh, good 45 minutes left in this match, I would say, if it goes all the way. Calling the ball. Now, remember what I was saying earlier on the forehand? This is the second time she's managed to go back onto that forehand. The first ball is now two feet short instead of five or six feet away on the backhand. Mm. Didn't move early enough, and the only reason she moved was because she thought that the ball in front was in the way. It should have been first choice. This is decent. Decent correction. In the area. Little bit narrow, that's the problem. She had the line perfect the last time. Hmm. Well, this match is wide open. It really is. Hate to say with any certainty as to what might happen. Well, we just can't tell for sure as the crowd erupt. There's another Jersey ball arrives at the head just in the background. <laughs> oh, she's lost it. So steady, so consistent in the first set, set and a half, and starting to slide away from her. Tracy Botha. Oh dear. Agony. Well, that's what it means to play for a gold medal in the Commonwealth Games. It has to hurt if you're not playing well. If you're all happy and smiles and you're not playing well, David, there's something wrong. Yeah, exactly. So, she looks worried and that, that's fair enough. She yeah, is. Absolutely. But no, being I... a good, sensible, professional player, she'll come back. She'll deal with it. But it's just a worry right now. disturbance so you just go and change your ball it's quite often the case oh that kicked early that really kicked early this is changing this rink is definitely changing a little bit no Tracy can you play through this with a little bit give it a chance Well, it's a matter of whether she miss misses her front ball, which she has. Needs a little touch on that to help it. Okay. Well, that's okay. That's fine.
Oh, the Aussies are building up now. You always know when things are getting close, they start arriving. Here they come. There we go. The Over arrival in... of the cavalry. Exactly, and the South African camp is on the other side. No, it's a team and individual disciplines, but it's the overall team as well that helps support. Well, this end will surely decide it. Oh, just got caught up there. night at the office and uh, it's not finished yet by some margin either now Julie can you get in oh it's kicked early again yeah, yeah. it's a fairly decent target the aim for is that red bull This needs to come back and come back quickly. She's hitting their own balls, hitting that one. Oh, didn't hit it even, went through straight through the gap. Well, it's very tight there. Oh, I thought she might have just managed to get onto that ball to disturb something. Well, it's out wide. Now it's coming back. It's sweeping back on the forehand. Has she got the pace? She doesn't. Nope. One to blue, and it's going all the way this match, all the way to a tie break. more than three minutes from real coffee. Love those wide open spaces. In here as well as out there. It's hard to get to. Maybe why it's the best kept secret in town. Don't tell anyone. The all new Street Smart Mitsubishi ASX. Built for your city life. Love that car. Last end of the second set. It's a decent start, actually. Not a lot of reaction from the South African team, but it's pretty good. Five shots. Hmm. Oh, there she goes. Sharon Renshaw, little snippets of form. Oh, great reply. Oh, what a ball.
very good ball, but not two brilliant balls also by Sharon Renshaw. When you're trying to close an end down, it's very important you get your lead in. There's the first one. Turned off it. There's the next one coming in from Sankey Steen. And whenever you need five shots to draw the set and win the match, and your opposition puts two balls within a few inches of it, it's going to be really, really difficult to achieve anything. Still a lot of noise here in the open stand behind green two, where all the finals will be held. Just lost her way a little bit in the last uh, few ends. So, Claire Duke. Once again, just trying to close the head down. Don't need to worry about playing out of sets or anything else. This is a goal middle situation. Ledge. Oh. That's about as locked down as you could possibly get. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, Julie. You don't need to ask the, the, your coach about what to do now. You're five up in the last end. You've got three balls around the jack. You've got one against you on it. They're not going to get five shots. Just close it down. Dear me. All within the rules, of course, but um, these girls are too good for that. They really are. They don't need that. Any advice in this situation? There you go. Put one around the back. South Africa need five shots, David. They've got two short balls. They've one on the jack and one just beyond jack high. It's all, I just can't even see it even being remotely possible for them to score any more than about two shots. Aussies are just closing the head down and getting ready for the three end tie break. There you go, three balls short. Play it out, Julie. Just play it out and move on. Just dropping inside. There we go. It was always going to be an end to be played out. There's nothing anyone could do about it. It's going to be one shot to South Africa. 
securely just throwing the ball down. There we go. No problems. So it's one to South Africa. But it means that it now goes to the tiebreaker because it looks like this at the end of that second set. 8-4 to Australia. And they lost that first set 9-6. So we go into the tiebreaker. Oh, there we go. We're getting more Aussie support there. Getting ready for things. This is going to be an interesting tiebreaker. That's Mark Casey on the left-hand side. And we're going to have... Uh, oh, there we go. We're having a conference before the tiebreak. Well, it may be triples in the Commonwealth Games, but uh, sometimes it feels like fours. Oh, there we go, a little wave. We're all on TV. Oh, yeah. It's good to see local support coming in. There's the Aussie camp. Too many of them to talk about, but there's a lot there. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, look at that. Isn't she pretty? A little princess. Lovely to see the kids here. So, three ends, accumulated shots. But if you can secure more than six shots in the first two ends, you won't need to play the last one. Put the back the gold medal in your back pocket and be a happy person. Just go off and have a few jars. Or if you're the usual Aussies and we have plenty of them about the players, you go on the rip. Have a that lovely feeling David of when you win, win a major championship no matter what it is no matter where it is or what it is but a really major championship and you're just settling back in the dressing room afterwards somebody hands you a cold one and you sit back and relax and think yeah job done job done that away a bit narrow um, yes yeah, so I'd always looked a little bit on the inside coming out of the hand Doesn't look too happy about it, Tracy. He's under as well. She has lost her way, I have to say, in terms of the last sort of six or seven ends. She's lost the, the consistency that she had.
Mark Kissy in the center there, just waiting his turn for the next session for the final of the men's triples. Well, it looks better line this time. It's all on how much pace she has. Getting a contact. Oh, that's a big, big help. That is a massive help. Claire Duke on a good line with this ball. It's all on the matter of how, how much pace she has. Has she got the running? Nope, didn't push it. Well, Julie Keegan in the end was waving that ball to get it away so she could be able to get a clear road at it. She's got no back position. She's got at least two against her. Not a great position for the Aussies. But Susanna is in with a good shot here. are really tense moments as we go into this tiebreaker because we're so close to the end of the match and you'd be well it's impossible to pick your winner at this stage i was going to say hard push to go for somebody but chances are you'd be wrong well. on the evidence of what we've seen it's not an obvious winner david because this has ebbed and flowed this match it has We have seen some good play, though, from Julie Keegan. She's been her usual reliable self, maybe not quite as high a standard as she normally produces, but she's still been pretty good. Now, what can she do here? Oh. It's a saviour time, isn't it? Wide and mighty with that one. Incidentally, we apologize if your view is sometimes obscured by the players that uh, we have asked them about it And it's uh, difficult obviously for them in a key match like this to remember But we have asked them to try and let our cameras see what's going on. They want to we want to share the excitement with them Always very very difficult though in amongst uh, the pressure of a gold medal match <laughs> The facial expressions are all there Oh dear Oh dear, that is not good. That's another one by the looks of it. This is going to hurt the Aussies. Mm, she knew she was just on the edge. She wasn't quite sure. And she's hit the opposition in. There it goes. And that looks like number three to me. Oh dear. And it's big ones. It's three big ones. And this is a bad start to this tiebreaker for the Australians. Well, it was a bad end all round, to be truthful with you. The three of them just didn't get it together. No. So, um, oh, they, it's not all over for them as it is, but what a start for South Africa getting a treble. Mm. That's uh, Rex Johnson in the middle, team manager for Australia. Kim Littlejohn off to the left, standing up in the dark green. Wayne Turley, they're all looking very unhappy at the moment, and I can understand why. Things was... can change, but it seems unlikely because they're running out of time. 
Well, you know, if they get one or two shots here, the Australians have got a chance. If South Africa get one or two shots, then it's, it's over. virtually over. Yeah. It really is. But, you know, the, the thing about an end like that is, David, though, if you're going to make a mistake, you know, it's not one player that made a mistake, as it turned no. out. It was all three had a bad end. Yeah. And it wasn't a particularly good end in terms of quality of play. No. So, you know, you all enjoy and shoulder the success, and you all have to just say, Fair enough, you know, that's the way it is. If it goes wrong. Got the gap by the looks of it, but it's a good starter ball. That's a good ball there. There's only just been flashes of, of Sharon Renshaw's ability. We haven't seen the proper Sharon in this match. I've watched her many times in this event, and uh, we've covered them three or four times. Don't know how it's worked. It just worked out that way on the draws, that's all. But... Um, She's played much better than this. This lady's just shaded the leading game. Good ball. Trails it back to the Aussie ball, but stayed with it. Preferred to have missed it. This is going to be very tense when you have two balls as close as this. Close again, close again. Just a little tap might turn it out. Mm, just gently nudge on it. That's good. That, that gives your second, your skip, a lot to work with. Really good end by both leads. Bearing in mind the pressure. That's an excellent end of balls. talking to herself, isn't she? She uh, knows that's not a good ball, but I'll tell you what, it's not that bad a ball either, because it's behind the head, and it's the only one that's in the deep end, which is not bad, but my goodness, she's felt the pressure over the last few ends, no doubt about it. Young girl, she's only 21 years of age, and played very well, very consistent, but to get to the final of a Commonwealth Games gold at 21, well, that's some going. It is, yeah. You can see that uh, she's still going through it all in her mind, rerunning each shot and where it was wrong. Claire Duke. In with a chance with this one. It's going to fade past, but it's going deep, and that's OK. Both those balls are useful. This certainly looks on a better line. It will dive very quick towards the end, though. It's close. Oh, gently, gently, girl. Just the weight, that's all. Just the weight. The margins between success and failure are so fine, aren't they, at this level? Well, that's exactly right, David. We don't know whose line is shot for sure. We can't tell from this distance. That's dropping short. Oh, dear. But that's going to stop. Well, it's not going to stop the backhand shot. Oh, conference time. More advice. Well, people can make the argument two ways about uh, having team conferences about a triples game. But it's within the rules in case you're looking in, you think it's unfair that somebody gets advice, well, the Aussies have their coach there as well to get advice. Is there a time limit on this, David? No, but what there is... But that seems extraordinary, that you can go yeah. on talking as long as you want. Well, I think there would be a situation where umpires would use their discretion and say, look, guys, get on with it. 
But they haven't used their discretion so far no. to discourage any of this. No, and this uh, is the second time in the last few minutes that this has happened. It's gold medal playoff. That's, that's, it's just so tense. I can understand it. Close with this. Very close with this. Needs to get it full. Well, there you go. Just carrying a little shield. Lots of clapping going on in one of the other rinks as well as one of the matches comes to a conclusion. English women's pairs, I think. Oh, just on that. It's a good home, though. It's a very good place to be. I just wish we knew exactly who was lying the shot because there's no indicators to tell us. Either way, we're going into the last end by the looks of it of the tie break. Julie, that's very tight looking to me. That's very narrow. Oh dear. Yeah, I can see what she's trying to do. If she gets onto her front ball, a little nudge, the red ball will drop out and she'll get two shots. I have a feeling that Australia might be line one. This should be wide. Absolutely. Decided to play round the back rather than worry about the jack. That's the cover ball that's gone in. And left Julie with a chance here to get the jack full in the face. With a little trail on. If she gets it absolutely right, she'll make a double. She's in the area, it's got a chance of two or three here. There's a ball out, she's made it. That was the perfect shot she was looking for. I think she's got three shots back. What an absolute beauty. Big, big ball. There's the treble back. Just said, touch the front one, out goes the other one. The fall back in for three. It was the obvious shot but she executed perfectly. And that was without any discussion with any coach. Absolutely right. That's a good point. There we go. That's how we stand at the moment. Couldn't be tighter. A set apiece and three all in the tiebreaker. 9-6 to South Africa. 8-4 to Australia in the second. A 3-3 now in the tiebreaker. And on we go to see who will take the gold medal in this women's triples. Well, this is terrific stuff. It's, it's hot. It's very exciting. Good crowd around the arena now to enjoy this. Well, there hasn't been much in it the whole game, to be fair. 9-6 in the first set for South Africa. 8-4 Australia in the second. Trading threes in the first two ends of the third and final set, the tie break. This and is when uh, they need this girl to go back to her best that we've seen earlier. Well, she's back on this forehand for the last while and that's really where she should have been the whole game. There it is. Hey. There it is. That's the one she wanted. It has been a bit of a struggle at times, but the forehand, I just thought, David, she should have been on that forehand all evening. The big puff of the cheeks and the sigh of relief. No wonder, but I mean, what a time to achieve it. That's what we, she needed and we wanted to see. But we also want to see South Africa get right into it as well. We are neutral. We're here to... Of course to drive the game forward, to explain it to everyone, and to try and build on the wonderful tension that already exists. Look at this, hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, not quite. Now, when I said we wanted to see it, I just was, I love watching these girls when they're all playing well. And uh, it doesn't matter to me who wins. We want a good winner, and we want to see good play. Exactly. And to see a game played by two teams against each other in the right spirit trying everything they can to win a gold medal for their country and for themselves needs to hurry with this she's under it needs to go past that ball and stay on 
I tell you what, that's as good if it stays. Oh, it's gone. It had a look. Did I not see the moss? I don't want to go in there. <laughs> we are so close to the end of this, and you still can't pick a winner. Well, it's certainly an advantage to Australia. No doubt about that. Without doubt, but that can all change. Any second. The margin between success and failure, etc. Now, we've seen her playing a few anxious efforts in the last few minutes. She needs something special right now. Yes, it's been difficult at times for Tracy. She hasn't really found it. I tell you what, she, if she gets under this front ball, she's close. She needs to move it. Well, actually, that's OK. She's going to push it into the ditch. That's the only problem. But at least now they can get a look at it. Turning out to be something of a marathon. Two and three quarter hours now we've been going. So sort of half expected it, didn't we? You did. You said to me beforehand this would be a long match yeah. and you were spot on. I just thought it was going to be somewhere around about the two and two hours and three quarters to three hours game. It had that look about it. Well, she's down on a reasonable line with this. If she's got the pace to carry it to the red ball. What they're trying to do here, David, is just get to this ball and drop off it. That's good. They're looking for the second ball. It's the second shot she wanted. They've got a good first shot. If it gets flicked off, they wanted one waiting just in case. So this needs pace. There you go. Just missed it. Two balls will go. But you have to be running. Ooh, is that under? I tell you what, she's not far away with this if it bends. It needs to bend. It needs to bend. Oh, the big gap all the way through. Up to the skip of South Africa. Susan Nell. We've got her as Suzanne Nell, but she's known as Susan to the skip. Everybody, now be very careful with this. Try and block it. That's what she's trying to do. Put the blocker in. Just drifted across a little bit. Still, it's pretty good. Well, just looking at that picture, actually, you can just see it's a bit of a shoulder, and everything is so, so tense now. These girls will go absolutely ape if they win this. They're so close to the goal. But... Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a new triple as well. That, that's the thing, David. It's been put together just purely for this particular competition. They're just regrouping now for the closing minutes of what's been a fantastic final. Terrific stuff and so tight, mm, hard to looks pull. like the big gap again. Oh, she's got the edge, and that was the ball that Claire Jerk put in. That was the ball that Claire dropped short trying to block it, and she used it as a shoulder. And she used it absolutely perfectly. Oh, dear me. And is it a toucher? That's the question. Have a look. I was a little bit concerned about the position of the ball, but I didn't think it would get at that angle. Now, does it touch a jack? We can't tell. So close if it hasn't. But I tell you what. If, touch her. If that's she, a toucher. And she shouted toucher. I think she shouted toucher. It'd be really difficult to do anything about this. If that ball goes into the ditch with the jack, then... It's all over. Oh, heartbreaking for the Aussies. Heartbreaking. But Susan Just a now, moment ago, they were on the verge of glory, and now... Big drive. It's wide at the moment. It's not going to do anything. She's taken that ball away. But again, what she's trying to do is get the edge. Now, I'm just trying to see if all of these balls are going off, because is there a toucher in the ditch? And we feel it is. That's the original toucher in the ditch. That's where she's trying to get the jack. If she can get half ball on the, on the current shot, there's a chance. She knows what to do. It's a half ball drive. Two choices here now for Susan Nell. 
<laughs> she either nail biting stuff, well, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, does she go deep to try and cover it or does she block? If she blocks, she has to block very short and make sure there's no shoulder to come off at an angle. Force Julie Keegan into playing a timing shot, which is not what Julie wants to play. She wants to play the big drive. The timing shot going the, this direction away from the comedy box is very difficult. Coaching at both ends of the ring. Oh, guys, come on. I suppose some might say it builds for the tension. There's two back balls mm. against her. I think it's very, very hard to put a back ball in in that situation. I really do. If she puts a blocker in, which is right down the middle of the rink, about three metres, three yards, it's going to be almost impossible to flick the, the ball off at the right in the right angle. I'll tell you what, though, just looking at that, any touch at all on that ball and that jack's going to Australia, it doesn't have to be a drive. She could just reach up to it. <laughs> Depends there's a gap between the, the ball and the jack, but... Here we go. Yeah, well, she's on a line to play a blocker. That is the line to play a blocker. Will it get back? Will it get back in time? Will it get back in time? Nope, that's not success. That is actually a guide. But Julie Keegan played with almost any weight she wants, while South Africa have got one hand on the gold medal. What tension, what pressure for the Australian skip. She's in the area, she's in the area. Oh, just missed it on the high side. That was a great, great effort. Oh. What, what a final, wonderful balls. South Africa take the single they need, take the gold, and the Australian triple, well, you did everything you possibly could. It was great stuff all the way through. Well, it's brilliant achievement by South Africa, and what pressure they withstood. They, they misfired, they stuttered, but uh, you've got to say, well done to South Africa. They've beaten a very talented triples here from Australia. And it's very good sportsmanship, good smiles all around, little hugs and kisses. It's been a long, emotional match and really high quality, great match. Hope you at home have enjoyed it as much as we have. It's been absorbing stuff. Yes, the tension's all been there, there's no doubt about it. The Aussie triple, maybe not performing the way they have done before, but my goodness, what a contribution they made to this game. South Africa 9-6, Australia 8-4, South Africa 4-3, two sets to one for South Africa. They are the Commonwealth Games gold medalists. Well, the teams go down to the end to meet up with their manager and their coaches and all the support staff. Well done, everyone. Hugs and kisses all round. What an experience for Tracy Lee, both at 21 years of age. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Sharon Renshaw, difficult time at the first start of the game. I thought that Julie Keegan played really well. There we go, bright sunshine at the start of the game. Susan Nell popping one in. Aussie's replying. Claire Duke. Little smile. Close bowling. It just got better and better. Once again, Skip getting in. Tracy supporting her. Brilliant draw from Julie Keegan. And that was a fantastic ball just to edge it off. A lot of high fives going around, good bowling happening. Just on the edge, I've made the three that they needed. I put a lot of pressure on. And as we move away from daylight into night. Oh, that hurt, that really hurt. Julie Keegan pushed it out for the three as she needed. That set up the wonderful last end in the tie break. And the tie break was full. Of, there we go, Sharon Renshaw, first ball, front toucher. It looked good, it looked safe, it looked secure, but oh, a big wick off the, off the outside ball. It happens, it's just unfortunate when it does at the final at this stage, when you get a lucky ball. 
But there we go. It was followed up. South Africa just checking the cards. They'll sign it off. They have won the women's Commonwealth Games triples gold medal. Disappointment for the Aussie team. More finals to come from them. But as you leave us for this match in the evening of Delhi, South Africa will be celebrating this evening. Well done to the girls. That's how they line up. Mon Yong from Malaysia in the sixth pairing. Also in the three-metre synchro, but with a different partner, Yan Eng. And Rebecca Gallantry for the first of the England pairing, the 26-year-old. She also finished fourth, just out of the medals with her partner, the 13-year-old Alicia Blagg. Here she is diving with Stacey Powell. Back dive pike. And it all will be forwards or backs or reverse or inward pikes. Pretty standard stuff for these divers, but you don't want to get behind the eight ball as we saw in the men's three meter synchro. The women's three meter synchro earlier, excuse me. Limb action has to match. The takeoff, same height. Oh, great dive, lovely to look at. Clean. And as you say, James, this gives a chance for the judges to have a look at pure style and form. Technically, very nice. Arms laid on thighs and then stretched back over the head. Well, the judges liked it as well, Mitch. Look at that, executions, 9 and 8.5, and then 9s for the synchronization.